This is the Banshee. It fires a volley of rockets at enemy ground targets. Now these Banshees are vulnerable to this Marine counterattack, so we're going to cloak our Banshees and engage them with our area effect missiles. Fortunately for us, those Marines have clustered up, which is exactly what you don't want to do against the Banshee. Now the enemy has a sensor tower nearby, which is allowing him to detect our Banshees, and those missile turrets are engaging us. Well, the Banshee is very powerful against ground targets, it's just not tough enough to stand up to those missile turrets. And once again, we're forced to retreat. To continue this attack on the enemy base, we're going to bring in our Reapers. This is a unit that you may remember from our original announcement demo. He's got his jump pack, which enables him to traverse this difficult terrain. The Reaper also has a new ability that you haven't seen yet. This is his demolition charge, which he can throw anywhere on the battlefield. The demolition charge takes a short time to go off. But once it explodes, it can do devastating damage to static enemy targets. The Reaper is also very powerful against the enemy's economy. We're going to move our Reapers into position here in this SCV stream and start to destroy the enemy's economy. It looks like the Terran commander is responding by transforming his command center into a planetary fortress. This is a powerful new Terran base defense that our Reapers simply don't have the firepower to deal with. Like many Terran players, we have bases all over the map. As you can see here, our supply depots are blocking access into our base, preventing the enemy from closing with our siege tanks and allowing us to shell them from range. Inside our fortified position here, we're going to use our SCV to build a new special Terran assault unit. This is the Thor. It's an assault unit so large and so powerful that it's actually built out on the battlefield. Done deal. Now it might appear that we are trapped inside our base. But in StarCraft II, supply depots can be lowered into the ground into a special defensive position that allows our units to path over them. And once we've moved through, we can raise our supply depots back into position to protect our siege tanks. This better be an emergency. On it. Oh, it's on. Now you may notice that the Thor has some additional guns on his back. These special artillery attacks can be used against tough targets like this enemy planetary fortress. Like everything in StarCraft II, the Thor does have his weaknesses. This is the Cobra. This is a small, fast Terran hover tank. It can actually fire on the move and it uses his powerful railguns to batter through the Thor's thick armor. Notice the Thor turns very slowly. That's as fast as the Thor can actually turn. It makes the Thor very vulnerable to this kind of speedy attacker. Now in order to continue our attack on this enemy base, we're gonna need to bring in some specialists. We really couldn't see making StarCraft II without including the ghost. I hear that. I'm all over it. I'm here. The ghost in StarCraft II is far more powerful than he was in the original StarCraft. I'm all over it. In addition to his personal cloaking field, the ghost can use his sniper rifle to deal lethal damage to enemy biological targets. 
The ghost also has access to a number of call downs. You've already seen our nuclear weapon. Now we'd like to show you the drop pods. This special ability allows the ghost to summon squads of infantry anywhere he wishes. As you can see, the Terrans have a number of new powerful units and some classic units with some new abilities. All of these add up into a flexible and powerful side that is more than a match for any of their enemies on the battlefields of StarCraft II.